portion of my era. And this por- the Torah starts off like this. God appears to Moses and says, to Moshe Rabbeinu says, I am Hashem. The heir of Ram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, I've shown myself to Isaac, Abraham, Yitzchak, Isaac, and Jacob. Vishmi Hashem lo The name of Hashem has not, I've not appeared to them with my name. So we talked a little bit about stages of freedom. And we have to really understand that the story of Shmos, which is the story of the Exodus, is not just a collective story that happened thousands of years ago, but it's a story, it's our story. This is the way we live leave our own personal Egypt, our own personal constriction and limitation. There are two types of names of Hashem that are predominant in the term. One is called the name Elohim, and one is the name Hashem. The difference between Elohim and Hashem, Elohim is Bereshit bara Elohim. Creator, Bereshit, in the beginning, Elohim creates. Because the definition of creator is a creator of creation, and creation is time and space and separation of time and space, a past, a present, and a future. That's the creation of, that occurs through the name Elohim. In the name of Elohim, in the reality of Elohim, there's a very strict hierarchy of things. For example, if a person needs to eat, they have to eat from something that seems to be on a lower level of consciousness than they are. So if you eat a vegetable, the vegetable gives you strength. Vegetables don't eat. Something of the vegetative universe kingdom does not eat a human being. There's this very strict hierarchy in the world of the natural. This is one creation. However, within creation itself, it says, Biyom HaSos Hashem Elohim. The beginning of creation says the day that Hashem Elohim created. What is Hashem? Hashem is the Yud, the He, and the Vav, and the He. The Yud Ke Vav Ke spelled the words Haya, Hove, and Yiyah, past, present, or future. It also means Yud Hove, the ever unfolding present, which is the eternal moment, which includes both past and future in the present. That's larger because it encompasses all of time and all of space. That's the unity and the uniqueness of time. So we have these two dimensions. In the world of Elohim, that's the world of order and absoluteness. And the world of Hashem is the possibility for the miraculous. So let's just understand this in terms of Redemption. The first thing to be redeemed, in order for a person to be redeemed, is they have to have a voice. They have to believe, and they have to say, oh, it hurts. I don't want to be in this situation any longer. That's the first stage. The second stage, which is the second portion of the Exodus story, is it's not enough to say, I don't want to be in this place. Now you have to imagine another possibility. Okay, you don't want to be in this relationship. You don't want to be in this job. That's the first stage to get out of it. Now you have to create for yourself the miraculous. And what do you want to create for yourself? In order to do that, you have to believe that there's a possibility beyond what you normally see as possibility. Because in your world, if let's say you're stuck in a certain job, in a certain place, and you say, well, according to my education, according to the situation of my life, this is the only job I can have. That's a Lokim reality. That's the law and order reality of creation. But if you really want to break out, first you have to say it hurts, and then you have to say, I believe in the power of Hashem. What's the power of Hashem? The power of Hashem is that within creation, there's also the possibility for the miraculous. And this is what Hashem is telling Moshe Rabbeinu. Shmi Hashem lo I have never yet appeared with the name Hashem. Hashem hasn't yet come up. But when you believe in the power of, of Hashem, which is the possibility of the miraculous, which is already enfolded within creation, then not only could you break your negative patterns, but you can also create for yourself something that's positive. And it's interesting that this, the story, the first mitzvah that the people of Egypt, people in Israel, of Israel, receive in Egypt is the mitzvah to sanctify the new moon. Because the ancient Egyptians were sun worshippers. They're worshippers of Ra. What is a sun worshipper? The verse says, Ein kol chadash tachas Hashemesh. There's nothing new under the sun. Says the Zohar, there's nothing new under the sun, but there's new under the moon. The sun represents predictability, hierarchy. I'm the son of, of the sun. The Pharaoh says he's the sun god. The children of the Pharaoh are the sons of God. The priests are, are higher, are at another level. And then there's a, a tremendous hierarchy in the Egyptian system. And if you're a slave, 
That's ontological. You're meant to be a slave. If you're a priest, you're a priest. If you're a pharaoh, you're God. And no one can change positions because there's a strict hierarchy in the order of the sun. The possibility for the miraculous is the moon reality, which is it waxes and it weans. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's not here. That's the possibility to say, even though I don't see it now, even though I don't see the possibility of really creating something different in my life, I believe in the possibility of chidush, of new, of renewal. And this is the era of Hashem, that Hashem appears to Moses and tells him, it's true, the people have cried. Near Pimhema, they became a little soft. There's a softening of self. In other words, they're breaking out of their old mold. But if you really want to bring them to freedom, now you have to give them a new way of thinking. Allow them to believe in the miraculous. And that's the name of Hashem.